What's up guys? Today we're going to talk about the Dynamic Duo, Outlaw Audio's Model 7220, and the Bang for Buck King, the Model 5000. What's up guys? Before we kick off the video, if you're interested in video and audio tech like these amplifiers, then hit that subscribe button for new weekly videos. Alright, so I spent some quality time with both of these amplifiers in my home theater. I had previously been using Emotiva's Bass X700 and 500 budget amps, which did a nice job, so I was curious to see what triple the cost would get me. Now if you didn't catch the overview videos of these outlaw amps, I'll go over a few tech specs. The 7220 is a 7 channel amplifier and retails for $2800. It'll output 220 watts per channel into 8 ohms with all 7 channels driven at once and 330 watts per channel into 4 ohms. It's also a fully balanced multi-channel amplifier from input to output, so you'll get some very high common mode rejection or CMR. This will help in lowering noise and distortion if you're connecting through the XLR inputs. Did I mention this weighs 93 pounds? So you know where that $2800 is going, probably those huge dual toroids. Now the Model 5000 is a little lighter, coming in at 50 pounds, so half the weight of the 7220. It's also not a balanced amplifier, and the price is reflective of the technology. It's a 5 channel amp and retails for $650. It puts out 120 watts per channel into 8 ohms, with all 5 channels driven all at once, or 180 watts into 4 ohms, all channels driven. So for testing, I had this hooked up to an Integra DRC R1 Pre Pro using XLR outputs and into the inputs on the 7220. The 7220 will be powering up my lower 7 channels, and the 5000 will be powering up my 4 Atmos channels using its unbalanced RCA inputs. Also take note that if you're watching this video and you were planning on adding an external amplifier to your existing receiver, you have to be sure that you have pre-outs for all channels on your AVR. These will be either XLRs or RCAs. If you've been following the channel, you may know that we use the SVS PB16 for subwoofer duties and the Arendelle Sound Monitor S speakers for full Atmos DTS-X setup. There are links for all the equipment that we use in the description down below, and there are also video reviews as well, so be sure you guys check those out. For listening, I've used my go-to demo movies. First up, the movie that has great low-level ambiance and huge dynamic shifts. It's A Quiet Place. Some of you may get tired of me talking about this one on my Audioholics reviews, but I find the opening chapter of this movie to have some very quiet, delicate nuances. So having the 7220 being a fully balanced amplifier, you do get an ultra quiet, low noise floor. Noise floor meaning there was no hum or buzz coming from any of the speakers. So when you're listening to quiet passages, like in a quiet place, you won't be distracted by any unwanted buzzing. Oh, and even though there is a fan in the amp, I can barely hear the thing running. Plus, I've got it in a different room. Anyways, sound quality is the best that I've heard in my home theater so far. I ran every speaker full range with no subwoofer to test out how it handles loud peaks and low frequency bass. And I gotta say, I thought the Arendelle speakers sounded good before, but this amp definitely took it up another notch. At near reference levels, and I only play at near reference levels because I do like to keep my hearing intact, the opening chapter was full of those little nuances like wind, blowing leaves scattering across the road, and those light pattering of footsteps. On lower powered amps and receivers, when pushed to louder volumes, you may notice it becomes harder to discern individual sounds. Things can become loud and muddled and just hard on the ears. Cleaner, more dynamic amps like the 7220 will be less fatiguing while still retaining every detail you can squeeze out of these soundtracks. Soundstage was extremely open, and thanks to the lower noise floor, the outdoor scenes had an audibly wide, airy feeling that coincided with the visuals on screen. There's a moment in the movie when the kids are playing Monopoly, and they tip over this lamp, and then you get this loud, abrupt thud of bass. The 7220 locked onto the woofers and was able to deliver that chest-pounding bass response with very tight control. And this is without a subwoofer. I actually had to double check to make sure the subs were turned off. Also, there's a moment right after the lamp tips over that you can hear a loud crash happen right above your head in the top left speaker, and the sound scatters across to the top right speaker. This loud crash had some pretty ample bass as well on the height speaker, so when people say there isn't much going on in the height channels as far as bass, then they must be running some subpar power. But yeah, using the 5000 to power the height speakers, while it wasn't a revelation like the 7220, it definitely delivered on the sonic goods in the height channels. Now, to test out bass response, I threw in my go-to demo disc, Aquaman. If you haven't heard this movie, then you're doing your home theater a disservice. There's gobs and gobs of low-end bass in this. And yes, bass response in this movie will be very dependent on the type of speakers you're using. So if you're using small bookshelf speakers, then obviously you won't get that low-end response. But if you've got some capable speakers up front, 
then as I mentioned before, the 7220 made it feel like I had my subwoofer active. I didn't get that skin tingling kind of bass because my speakers don't go quite that low, but they were able to push them as far as I've ever heard them before. Mid-range was excellent as well, especially in the center channel. Vocals had a nice deep weighty presence in well-recorded material, unlike some lower tiered amps that I've heard recently. And forget about the receivers I've reviewed, they just haven't been able to give my center channel a workout. Okay, now just for fun, I switched out the 7220 to power the high channels and used the 5000 to power the lower channels. The leftover channels of the 7220 powered the back speakers since the 5000 is only a 5 channel amp. And I gotta say, the 5000 is a very capable under $1000 amplifier. First thing I noticed was I did hear a very faint hum coming from the tweeters if I stuck my ear to it. Otherwise, at the seating position, I couldn't hear a thing. But dynamics were nearly as good as its bigger brother, with the exception being that extra punch and low end control. It didn't drive my front channels quite as low as the 7220 did, but it did get some good slam. The open airy nature I heard with the 7220 was almost there, with the 5000 just kind of missing that little bit of crispiness. If I didn't have them both on hand, then I may not have noticed a thing. Just the biggest difference to my ears is the more expensive amplifier does play louder and does have noticeably more impact at both lower and louder volumes. As for sound signature on both, I found them to be very neutral. They weren't bright or warm, just clean and didn't add anything to the movies that I listened to, which is a good thing especially for home theater usage. You don't want detail to be rolled off or too harsh or too bright. They were both just pleasant to my ears. So the question is, are these amps worth the asking price? Well for one, the 7220 was made by ATI here in the USA. For some folks, getting a product made in America is a big deal, so you've got that going for it. And ATI is a huge player in the amplifier world. They make amps for some of the most prestigious brands out there like Levinson, so the Outlaw is in some pretty awesome company. Plus, this is a fully balanced amplifier, so if you're an audiophile, this is a pretty huge deal. For my situation, this was the best amp that I've heard so far. It's ultra clean and dynamic and should have enough headroom to drive almost any speaker to reference levels and beyond. The Model 5000, yes, not quite as impressive as the 7220, but it wasn't a slouch either. I mean, it only cost 650 bucks and honestly, there were times I had a hard time telling the difference between the two. The 7220 was more than enough to drive my lower speakers, but for high channel duty, it's probably overkill. The Model 5000 was great for lower channels and it was an overachiever for the overhead speakers. And I do know a lot of people who purchase this amp just to power the overheads. If you've got a receiver and you're feeling a little underwhelmed by its performance, I think the Model 5000 will definitely give you more dynamic range than almost any receiver out there. And it doesn't cost that much. Just be sure that you have pre-apps to accommodate it. So whichever way you go, either the 7220 or the 5000, I always recommend getting the best amp you can buy because it'll most likely outlast any receiver or pre-pro that you've got on hand. Amplifiers are one of those things that you buy once and don't upgrade for years. At least for normal people, that's how it works. Now, if you guys are interested in any of these amps, I'll leave some links to them down below in the description. Let us know if these are on your shortlist for upgrades or are you already an outlaw. Thanks for watching. Be sure to follow us on social media and swing by our Patreon page. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys again in the next video.